Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions. Hello, I'm Lori Steiner. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, here's to your health. We'll work to improve your well-being. Then, we'll alert you to alterations in social security planning procedures. You've invested in your health insurance plan. We'll help you reap the rewards. Plus, want to better your brain? We'll open your mind to amazing opportunities. And looking for a home for the long haul? We have choice advice when considering continuing care communities. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. Your legs ache when you stand for a long time, or they feel so uncomfortable when you're trying to sleep. Sometimes you feel an itching or burning sensation in your legs, but all that's normal, right? Not necessarily. According to Dr. Mira Moyes, these are symptoms of varicose veins. What can you do about them? She's here to tell us. Dr. Moyes is an attending uh, surgeon with Metro Health. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, I, I thought varicose veins were those little red veins you get on your legs that you can see, and they're just when you get old. And I mean, isn't, is that what you're talking about with varicose veins? Well, varicose veins falls into the large spectrum of venous disease. So you can have problems with your veins and symptoms associated with that without actually out having those visible veins. Okay. Some people have uh, the smaller spider veins, other people have those large ropey veins, and other people just have tired, achy legs. <laughs> so those are the symptoms, and we're talking about this disease, so it's the aching legs, and what are the other things? Achiness, soreness, fatigue, some people get um, uh, painful cramps, charley horses in their legs. Okay. At night, other people just get pain and irritation right where the veins are. Mm -hmm. um, it can kind of cause burning, itching. Um, some people describe ants Ooh. crawling up and down their legs. It's kind of hard to ignore then. So right. why do these things occur? What's going on? Well, um, as people age, they can develop um, uh, problems with their veins. Um, other uh, reasons could be pregnancy. A number of people will not have any veins, and then after pregnancies will find that they've you know, gotten a couple of other things besides the baby. They're everywhere. So what's actually going on in the veins? So the job of the veins is to bring the blood up from the extremities up towards the heart. Um, and there are valves that are, sit in your veins that help to keep the blood up. Mm -hmm. If those valves are leaking, the blood just pulls back down and causes those veins to become dilated and enlarged over time. So that's what you can see when they're closer to your, the, when, your skin. Closer to your skin, right. All right. Is it only in your legs or can this happen anywhere? Um, mostly in your legs because that's the most dependent part of your body. Gravity is kind of working against you in the legs. <laughs> yeah, that would be true. So um, is this just simply aging or are there other factors really involved? I know you mentioned pregnancy, but anything else going on that... Well, it most occurs, mostly occurs in women uh, than in men. Pregnancy is a factor. Um, weight gain is a factor. High heels, actually, um, can also cause um, problems with the veins later on in life. How about crossing your legs at the knee? No, that's an that advice is, to you. <laughs> and my teacher told me that when I was just a kid. I, so I always cross at my ankles now. So, Are there options to treat these kind of varicose veins? Yeah, um, I mentioned the various different symptoms, but not everybody has symptoms and not everybody needs to be treated. They're not dangerous. Um, so if you're not having any symptoms or if your legs don't bother you, um, they don't necessarily need to be treated. If okay. they do cause symptoms, the first uh, their goal of therapy is uh, compression stockings. Oh, okay. And they generally Sounds will help. And they generally will help two-thirds of people who have problems with their veins. Uh, compression stockings are all you need. Okay. But when the blood is pooling, it's no risk of clots or anything from the veins. Is that correct? Well, you can get some superficial clots, um, but those are not the dangerous clots that are going to travel to your lungs. Okay. Good. They can be tender and painful, but they're not <laughs> dangerous. Anything besides just if it gets worse or it's really giving you problems in the compression socks and any other treatment doesn't help, is there some other option? There are. So if compression stockings aren't alleviating your symptoms or they're very difficult to get on or if the cost is prohibitive, um, there are some, uh, some options. They can involve anything from surgery, from vein stripping, physically removing the veins, mm. or they can involve um, injecting the veins with medication that causes it to collapse and clot off. Or if it's a larger vein involved, it can involve a procedure called an ablation, placing a catheter that causes the veins to collapse and go away. Oh, okay. So it's not horribly dangerous, very uncomfortable probably, and there's treatments. And it can we be have treated. options. Yes. Excellent. So whether you see enlarged veins in your legs or not, if you have the symptoms Dr. Moyes described, you, sh you could have varicose veins. 
and you don't have to endure your leg pain in vain. To learn more, use the information that's coming up next. My thanks to Dr. Moyes for joining us today. Thank you. To learn more, call Metro Health at 216-778-7800 or log on to www.metrohealth.org. Next, a change in plans. But first, there's an 80-foot tall tire that is parked near the Edsel Ford Freeway in Detroit, and Uniroyal owns it. But in order to roll out this wonderfully wide wheel, they needed to find a steel frame to fit it. So where did they find a template for the tire? It's fair to say we'll circle back with the answer in a moment. Hilltop Village Apartments is retirement living at its best. Residents enjoy a wide variety of activities and living services with all large first floor apartments, private screened in patios with beautiful park views, daily dining room meals, free laundry facilities, 24 hour staff and so much more. Enjoy safe, comfortable independence at a very affordable price. Call today for a tour and learn how you can get your first month's rent free. Hilltop Village Apartments, retirement living at its best. What goes up must come down, except for the Ferris wheel at the 1964 New York World's Fair. After fairgoers had their fun, the wheel became the driving force of the frame for Uniroyal's tremendously tall tire. At 80 feet, it's quite a feat. Over the years on our show, Jim Lineweaver has given us many ways to get the most out of our money, including our Social Security benefits. Today he's here to tell us about a change in those benefits that could curtail your cash flow. Jim is a certified financial planner professional with the Line Weaver Financial Group. Welcome back to the show. It's good to see you. This sounds like bad news. It is. No way to sugarcoat it. Unfortunately, Social Security is pulling back some benefits, and this is the first significant change that they've, they've done since 2000, so it's a pretty big adjustment. It's been a long time, yeah. It is, and what they're doing is they're taking a benefit called file and suspend, and what they're giving people is through like April, the end of April in order to be able to see if they can still qualify it, you can still apply for it, but beyond that, the benefit's going to be gone, and this all came through the Bipartisan Budget Act that was approved in October of 2015. That was to keep the government from going out, running out of money, right? <laughs> well, it may not help, but maybe a little bit, but I think there's other problems there. All right, so you talked about file and suspend. So what is that? Yes, well, let's assume you and I are married, okay? You don't okay. tell your husband, I won't tell my wife. We're only gonna be married about five minutes, so we should be okay. Okay. But let's say um, we've reached full Social Security retirement age. And let's say I wanna keep working or I have a part-time job or something. We don't need that additional money. What I could do is I could, I could actually file to suspend my benefits you could collect off my benefits, and what's gonna happen is my benefits are gonna to continue to grow 8% per year until age 70. So let's say I was 66 at full Social Security retirement age, mine would keep growing and I'm not collecting, you're, coming, you're collecting off mine, and then at age 70, I could turn my benefits on and nothing was lost and it'd be at a higher benefit than I would have if I triggered it at age 66. So let's file and suspend so you can benefit. So we get a little bit of money during those years, but we're building up to the big money at age 70. Yes. Okay. Um, and this particular program is being eliminated because of something called deemed filing? Yes, it's a technical term, but basically what happened is people were first eligible for Social Security at age 62, and then you had to decide whether you wanted to collect that or not because it would be at a reduced benefit. But what happens is this deemed filing was basically at age, for most people, 66, which was your full retirement age. That means before then, if you wanted to collect, they'd calculate either your benefit or the spousal benefit and you were automatically going to get the higher of the two. You didn't have a choice. That's what you were going to get. And you'd carry that all the way you know, through the rest of your retirement. Well, what they did now is they said, okay, we're not just stopping that at 66. We're going to push that all the way out to age 70. So what that means is before, after age 66, I had a choice. I could either take my Social Security benefit or I could say, well, if yours is higher, I'm just going to take yours. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, they're eliminating all that and that's getting removed with this change in the Social Security 
And rightfully so. I mean, it did benefit a lot of millions of Americans out there, but unfortunately, Social Security is not in the best financial shape. So I'd have to suggest that you're probably going to see some other changes to Social Security down the road. Just like this year, there was no increase in the Social Security, the cost mm -hmm. of living adjustment that's being paid out. So with all the other things that are going on in the country and with the deficit that everything's run, you know, the government's running, um, just kind of expect some more changes coming down the road. Okay, with regard to file and suspend, that's it. We're just out of luck. Well, what ends up happening is if you can get your full Social Security, you reach that age before April 30th, go ahead and file. If you can get it approved, you will be under the radar, and you'll actually get it approved, and you'll be able to keep that for retirement. Anything after April 30th, sorry, the benefit's gone, and unfortunately, you lost out. All right. Well, some of you may still be able to take advantage of file and suspend as a part of your Social Security planning, but don't wait. This tool is being taken away, and soon. Need help to figure out if this could figure into your personal plans, or what to do if it doesn't? Give Jim a call. His number's next. For more information, call the Line Weaver Financial Group at 1-888-313-4009, or click to www.lineweaver.net. Next, a checkup on your health insurance. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. Still want to harvest fabulous food even during winter's frosty weather? Visit the Farmer's Market at the Frostville Museum in the Cleveland Metro Parks. On select Saturdays in the winter season, the barn will be bursting with food and flavors. To determine the dates, call 330 592-6518 or visit www.frostvillefarmersmarket.com Last chance! Only one week left! Don't wait! No, we're not talking about a great sale at your favorite store. We're talking about purchasing a product that could cost you even if you don't buy it. Here to unravel this riddle is Doug Bennett, Director of Individual Health Plans at Medical Mutual of Ohio. So, what is it we're talking about? So, so the deadline we're talking about is uh, the primary audience is individuals and families under the age of 65 who don't have coverage through an employer. It's the Affordable Care Act open enrollment deadline. It's January 31st. You need to purchase your coverage or make changes to your existing coverage by that date. Okay, so what happens first if we meet the deadline? So if you meet the deadline, everything's, everything's in good shape. Your coverage will start on March 1st and you'll be set for 2016. Okay, what if we miss the deadline? What happens then? So this is where the story doesn't get quite so good, <laughs> right? If you miss the deadline, there's a good chance that you're gonna either be stuck, and when I say stuck, with, your, with the plan that you had last year, you don't have an opportunity to make changes if your needs have changed. And the bigger concern is for people who would be new to the market that were looking to get coverage for the first time, they may very well be shut out from making any changes till 20, or, or getting any coverage until 2017. There are some, some unique circumstances called these special enrollment periods, things such as having a baby or getting married that may allow you to get the coverage, but those are the exceptions, not the rule. And then the worst part of the whole thing is if you don't get this coverage, you're going to likely be subject to a tax penalty because the Affordable Care Act has this individual mandate that requires everyone to have qualifying health insurance. Okay, if we miss it, what's it going to cost us? Well, it keeps costing more year after year, right? The penalty started out small. Um, back in 2014. Last year, as an example, the penalty was $325 for every uninsured adult or 2% of your household income. 2016, much higher. It's going to be $695 per uninsured adult or 2.5% of the household income, whichever is the greater of the two, actually. Holy cow. Yeah. That's a big penalty. So. Well, what if you're having trouble affording health insurance? Well, well, the good news is subsidies are available. They've been available since the inception of, of the Affordable Care Act. And individuals are, are surprised to find out that, they, that they're eligible sometimes. We've seen numbers that indicate as many as 9 million Americans last year missed the opportunity mm. for, for a subsidy that could have qualified. So we encourage folks to go out and take a look at their options, make sure that they're, 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 they're looking at every opportunity they have for their subsidies because it really can help defray the cost of the premium. So how much income can you have and still get a subsidy? So individuals between 139% and 400% of the federal poverty level will 
qualify for some premium assistance. Okay. Well, it sounds all really complicated. How do we figure this out? <laughs> so so there's, a, there's many options, right? Uh, most people at this point have heard of healthcare.gov, and that's a, that's a site where you can investigate your plan options, qualify for your subsidies. I recommend you go talk to someone who's an expert in the field. Independence insurance brokers, they can help you with both your benefit choices and to see what you qualify for or call your insurance carrier. Uh, Medical Mutual, we've got a couple of options. If you want to go straight to our website at medmutual.com, you can do all of that yourself, or you can call a licensed sales agent. We've got them standing by on the phones, and they can help you again with both plans and premium assistance. But don't miss the deadline, right? J January 31st, please don't miss the deadline. Okay, the clock is ticking. You have one week left to enroll for health insurance for 2016, so don't wait. Follow Doug's advice and begin looking at your options immediately. And if you need help, use the information that's coming up next. My thanks to Doug for joining us today. Thank you. Find out more about Medical Mutual of Ohio by visiting their website, www.medmutual.com slash 2015 options, or call 1-866-488-3266. Next, Brain Matter. It's time to get up and go, an exercise segment on golden opportunities. Hello everybody, it's Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness and we are here today to show you not only how to work your important shoulder muscles, but also the triceps in the back of the arm. Every woman wants to work that area. You ready to do it? I was born ready. All right, let's do it. We got our bands here. We're gonna start with the bands under our backside because we wanna be seated on the band just to make sure they stay in place. What we're gonna do from here is we're gonna start with our hands at about a 45 degree angle and our palms just above our shoulders. We're simply gonna press that band up above the head, just about touch and bring them back down to the starting position, okay? We're looking for 12 to 15 repetitions, slow and controlled movement and also please do not rock back and forth, maintain that good posture. How you feeling, Lori? Oh, taller already. Taller already, all right, yeah. Taller, yeah. That's good, you got some strong shoulders there, everybody. Okay, 12 to 15, make sure you're breathing and now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 6105 Parkland Boulevard, Suite 140, Mayfield Heights, Ohio, 44124. Ready to beef up your brain? While you may have resolved to become physically fit, you also need to work out your brain matter, like a muscle. Crystal Color is here to treat us to a personal brain training session. Crystal is the director of Menorah Park Center for Brain Health. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So let's start at the beginning. Um, we're gonna be talking about the brain teasers in a minute, but first of all, what does the Center for Brain Health actually do? We offer a variety of programs and services and assessments to people that are living in the community with concerns about their memory or thinking skills. Okay, so you offer free screenings, is that it? Not all. The first thing we do is we do offer free memory screenings with the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. And so individuals can sign up for a free assessment year long. They come in, we complete the screening, and they leave with a letter that they can take back to their health care provider to let them know they've had a screening and how they did. Okay. And then we can also make recommendations for our cognitive fitness classes. So we offer a wide variety of different classes from the brain teasers, which we'll do in a little while, to a mind spa, learning how to relax your mind. Ooh. And all the classes are centered that you learn information about brain health and wellness, what's important to you, tips and tricks that you can apply to your everyday life so you can boost your brain and strengthen your memory. All right, well let's talk about the free assessments then first. Tell us a little bit about that. And so individuals usually call and make an appointment and come in to see us. And with the free screening, it's about 15 minutes long. Mm. And since we're a national memory screening site with the Alzheimer's Foundation of America, they're able to have a couple different assessments done and then at least know a baseline for their memory, how they're doing and if they should fo follow up with another healthcare provider or if they might want to enroll in one of our classes that could benefit them. Okay. Do you have to have a screening in order to take the class? No, some people think that. Our classes are really open to any adult in the community that's having concerns with their memory or that just wants to stay engaged and challenge their brains. Okay, so we're actually gonna do a mini class right now, correct? Yes. So tell us what we're gonna do. What you're going to see on the screen is some picture puzzles. And so it's important on the way the words are shown and maybe the color and the placement. And so they make a short phrase 
Okay, or so we got the first one. Meaning. First one up on the screen right now. So what we're trying to figure out is what what, what phrase goes with that that set of words. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. We'll give everybody a chance to think about that for a sec. Let's we'll see. I think I know. I think I'm good. I think it's mind over matter. You're right. All right. So we have another one. Okay. So there's again it's the same kind of thing, right? A phrase that is represented by these words. So, hmm. I'm good at this. I think You're this doing is well. deep in thought. That is correct. And the color probably helped you solve yeah, that one. Yeah, it did, because it kind of gave you a clue deep was important. Mm -hmm. OK. All right, a third one. Hmm. This, this is a little tougher, huh? This is meant to be the tricky one. I don't know this one. I got to sign up for some classes, I think. <laughs> What's the answer? Scatterbrain. Oh my gosh, yes, of course. Once you know it, it's obvious, right? Yes. <laughs> well, that was fun. And um, this is the kind of thing that the classes will take care of? Yes, that's an example of our brain teasers class. So we okay. really work to challenge our minds and we work in groups so we can learn from one another the tips on how we solve this Open problem. to the public? Yes, it is. Any cost? Um, they're around $10 a class. All right. Well, that was fun. It sounds like I would like to do those classes. So you can boost your brain, too. Make the most of your memory. It's easy and fun to do. To learn more about these classes or other services, use the information, that, information that's coming up next. My thanks to Crystal for a wonderful brain workout. Learn more by calling Menorah Park's Center for Brain Health at 216-839-6685 or visit www.centerforbrainhealth.org. Next, relocation considerations. Here at Metro Health, you know you matter when it matters most. Here, we are the city's best at preparing for the world's worst. Here, we are the only verified burn center in Ohio for adults and children. Here, you'll find exceptional clinicians with extraordinary hearts. So the work we do here at Metro Health makes an impact here, out here, and right here. Metro Health, we're here for you, for all of you. Did you miss a phone number or website? Then here's your second chance because we're going to list all that information again. Then we'll be back to pack up advice about moving to a certain kind of retirement community. As you start your Act 3, Retirement and Relaxing, you are visiting a new living arrangement called a CCRC, Continuing Care Retirement Community. The tour is great, everyone you meet is friendly, and the clubhouse is beautiful. Your children want you to move to a smaller place anyway, but is this the place for you? To give us his continuing advice is my partner, Mike Solomon. Hi, Lori. So first of all, what exactly is a CCRC? Well, CCRC is a, is a residential community that provides, you can start an independent living, you go to assisted living and then you go to a skilled nursing facility if you need one. It allows you to age in place. You don't have to move to different locations. And once you're in there, if you satisfy all the rules, you know, you're guaranteed a spot. So you keep moving up through the system. Okay. Well, how do you decide on which CCRC is actually the right one for you? Well, there, there's a tremendous variety. I mean, you get some that are like ranch houses, independent, or you can get something more like a uh, urban setting where it's a high rise or, or just separate, you know, cluster homes. So there's a variety of things. Some of them have you know, swimming pools and shopping right on campus and others are more suburban like you have to go off campus to to you know get those sort of services okay well it sounds like they're nice like I would like to sign up so what do I do to sign up well you have to do a little research number one they have a lot of different fees obviously there's an entrance fee which can range from 
$30,000 to a million dollars. So obviously a big range. You know, that's the entrance fee. And then the monthly cost can range from as low as maybe $500 a month to maybe up to $4,500 a month, depending on where you are in that spectrum with the services. And if you go to a skilled nursing facility, it might even be more. And then they have fees maybe for a la carte sort of things where you're getting certain specialized services. So, you know, that's a lot of money for many people. Many people can't afford it, but it's something to, to consider. And, and if you do, let's say, have this entrance fee and then you pass away or you leave within a certain state of time, sometimes you get that back. Uh, other places are more like an apartment where, you know, they, they don't give you anything back unless they rent it out. It's important. To, it's a lot of document. You need to look at it, make sure you understand the deal that you're getting possibly have an attorney look at it because it's a big investment. It sure is. So let's say we decide that a CCRC is the right move as we enter our Act 3. How do we find a, a good one? Well, you need to research. Uh, there's a website that's going to be on the screen, that uh, www.ccrcs.com, and that will give you, you know, these sites all over the country. So you can look and see what's out there. You can look for some maybe that are near your friends if that's what your goal is, but you can do a lot of research on that. Also, some states regulate these fairly closely. So, you know, and if they regulate them, there'll be information. There's another website that we have on the screen there uh, that you can look at that website and find out what's regulated and look at that. Now, the other thing that's really important, you're going to be depositing a lot of money. So you want to make sure this, this is a financially responsible organization. You might get one that's been in place a while with the idea that therefore they're around. Some of them are connected with charities or churches. You can get some more information, but check it out because you're going to be depositing a lot of money. You want to make sure that it's not going to disappear on you. So once we pick a one that we're interested in, um, are there, is there any other help in choosing the, which one of those is the right one? Well, it's, it's research. Now, on our website, www.ssnplaw.com, there are going to be a bunch of articles and, and, and further clicks on to, uh, to other information for you. So that's where you should maybe start, to start your search. All right, excellent info. Picking a CCRC is a once-in-a-lifetime decision. Um, some of them let you have a test stay to kind of test drive the community. Do it. Be sure to read the contract and any other agreements carefully and hire an attorney to help. My thanks to Mike. For more information, call him at the number coming up next. Call Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization. Or log on to www.ssnplaw.com. Thanks for joining us. Until next week, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. If you'd like to join our kitchen conversation, visit our website, www.goldenopportunities.tv. Like us on Facebook. Call us at 440-742-GO-TV or email us at kitchen at goldenopportunities.tv. We'd love to hear from you. Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions.